Uh, welcome back, everyone, from your nice coffee break. We have a great panel discussion now uh, on turning community goals into successful member journeys. We have three amazing panelists. You've seen all three of them talk today, which is great. <laughs> we have Manuela again, Frederick, and Moritz um, to start the discussion on as well. So I'm going to put this down. So, of course, engagement has been quite the hot topic, not just today, but generally, I think, in all client calls that I've had, how do we get engagement rolling and how does it work? Specifically, also starting a community, having a goal in mind. Frederick even discussed that, right? Having a goal in order is a central step to even starting a community and how to implement even forward. So I guess you're all, of course, working on that, on our communities in different aspects as well. So they also created community goals and how to uh, get successful m member journeys going. Everyone does it differently and different ideas. Of course, also the product side in that way. So we're going to start with our first question as well, which is when starting your online community, how did you go about formulating your community goals? And Manuela, we're going to start with you. Thanks. Um, I, I will say the first thing is asking which is the impact you want to see um, in one year, in five years in 10 years, uh, and then uh, you know, who will you involve in this community to see that impact? That will be the, the, the very first things. Uh, and then you really go out from there, like you. So it's really blue sky thinking, and then uh, you, you chunk it, and you specify. Frederick. That's what we did. Yes, so, <clears throat> sorry. From from what I I saw with you, I think there are often um, there is a, often a misunderstanding between what you want to achieve. Let's forget two seconds the community, right? Mm. So the, the the goal beyond yeah. um, can be a lot of stuff, right? So imagine it's uh, the goal is uh, we want to raise awareness on blah blah blah. That's the goal. But that might not be the purpose of the community, mm. because the community is only maybe might be only one of the elements of what you try to achieve. And often there is a kind of misunderstanding with that. So yeah, we want to raise awareness. Yeah, but why do you need a community? And if you need a community, what for? Mm. So the purpose of the community is, is is something else than the goal, mm. the overarching goal, I would say. And it's important to make the difference and to really challenge members, I mean, the first members and, and the core group on, on this. Secondly, mm. um, what we also often uh, saw is that you might have a very nice idea of what you want to achieve and why uh, you need a community and what the community uh, purpose. Um, but you need to have a nice storytelling. And really, frankly, people are so bad in it. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, you need to have a, a storytelling that applies to the different personas of your mm -hmm. audience slash community. Uh, it needs to be um, a pitch, like you have a startup pitch, you know how you mm -hmm. do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you need to be able to pitch your community. You need also to, to be able to tell the story. And frankly, in the playbook, you will find a, a few elements in the first step to how to build that story, but we experience that it's not enough that, that the, um, the need on, let's say, on the market, if I can call that a market, is, is way uh, bigger than this. Mm. And I had a third point, but I spoke already uh, too much, so <laughs> more it's... Yeah, as a product owner, what is your yeah. perspective? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of important things have been already mentioned, like... Um, I, I think the, the first step we've seen with uh, setting up communities is that it indeed helps to, to understand what is the purpose, what do you want to achieve. But also, um, obviously, as, as Victoria said, like understand what your users want to do, right? There might be a dispergence between what you as an owner of the community want to achieve and what the users want to do. And um, understanding that and, and understanding what is your value proposition as a community, but also as a digital tool that you're offering, not only the community, which again might be different, but what's the value proposition of your digital tool will help like get you started, but it will also help you focus on one thing. Uh, we talked about it in the onboarding concepts here that 
Um, starting small, starting focused and doing that really well helps you build a core group. And I think that's really, really important in setting your goals is that, yeah, think about where you want to be in five years, but then uh, indeed abstract down to like, what do I want to do now? And what do I think can I deliver to the users so that they actually start and that you mm -hmm. can build that, that, that core group. I think we've seen it in a few presentations. You talked about super users. Uh, you mentioned that in your circle. I think that's really, really essential. Mm -hmm. If I can uh, add or go mm -hmm. further in terms of open social communities, because uh, one thing is building a community in itself. And in our case, we are very lucky. We have one. It's a movement, right? So the question is how and which sub-communities within the movement, because of course there are a lot of sub-communities and uh, subcultures uh, as such, how do you move them online and why? And then there is a difference between a community and a group. Like without our own uh, internal customers within WAGS, we have people that come and say, I want to create a group. And really think that people, you know, that then it will be a community, and then it's go, why? What do you want to do with that? And that difference between the the purpose for the project manager, and then what happens in the community is very important. Yeah, and. You want to add to that? Go yeah, ahead. I want to add on this because mm -hmm. yeah, this, I totally agree. And um, really often people come and say, yeah, I want a community. We want to build a community. And when you ask exactly to describe what they mean by community, often it's only, it's not negative when I say, a network. Mm -hmm. And people don't see the difference between a network and a community, which is in a nutshell building a common identity, having a clear goal, delivering some stuff. A community is way more than a network, right? Mm. Um, that's, that's the basic step. And, and secondly, you need to be indeed very, very specific because, um, and it's the case when, when I, I showed you the, 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 our one pager, it's also always, or most of the time it's written, connect with others, blah, 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 but mm. you need to be more specific. So try to describe, okay, in a one, one year time, describe the situation that will be. You say people will be connecting more each other. What do you mean by connecting? Is it mm. two people, 100? To be very specific. Yeah. I definitely experienced that also working with clients. It's always the most difficult subject, right? Like, what is your goal? It is usually when they explain it, right, it's hard to define. And I also always ask, do you then speak to your users, right? Because you're doing this also for the users. And oftentimes it's really hard to connect with users to talk to them and find out, like, their needs and wants, right? So how do you make sure then to match your, like, community needs or, like, wants from actually to your goals? Do they defer? Do they match? And if they don't, how much try, do you try to bridge that gap yeah maybe i can start from that where the it also connects a little bit to what we already mm -hmm. discussed from a product perspective um, and I'm, I'm going back to what i already mentioned in my presentation that i think uh, for example gamification can play a really vital role in that because um, while gamification is like what most people think about is like oh you get some points and some badges and it nice pops up and engages people whatever but that's actually not the most important aspect of it but the most important aspect for me is that it uh, creates a value system for a community, right? Um, you as a site owner and with your team, you define, uh, as you say, you want to create not only a network, but a community, and a community has values and an identity. And the gamification system ideally creates a value system in terms of that, that, that helps people to understand what you want them to do and that helps them to also grow within the community step by step that gives them something to do and that makes it clear, oh, like this is a valuable interaction or oh, if I help somebody out here um, by like a reward, by points, you understand like, oh, this is a positive thing or if I reach out to people and get a lot of likes for my comments that is like en engaging for everyone. So while, while it's a, a good engagement tool, but it also helps you define what is important for me, what do I want people to do, and how, how can we translate that into a growth path for, for the user. 
But how do you then like bridge that gap, right? You have quite a bit of users on your platform, a lot more anonymous, also users you don't connect to, right? How do you make sure actually what your as an organization goals are, are matching the needs and wants and actually the goals of the users on the platform? And do you really formulate that before even doing your goal? Do you talk to them to formulate that goal or is it really top down or bottom up? And how do you bridge that gap? I think it's a little bit like uh, OKR, right? Mm. So you have your objective and, mm. and then your, your, your actions. So um, I think you need to combine and it's, it doesn't seem to be too complex because the needs of the members for what we experience are quite more pragmatic maybe, um, <clears throat> quicker maybe than the overworking goal. It depends where you start, right? Mm -hmm. When you start, but it makes me think to uh, to something else also. So, in a lot of communities of what you you would certainly have seen, um, it's connection and then and then share your best practice, mm -hmm. um, best practice, share your good practice. Mm -hmm. I hope. Um, <laughs> and sharing is very, it's a bit strange because you ask people to share, and basically it never works in my experience. Mm -hmm. Because the one who will be sharing a few percentage of them, as we discussed this morning, they need an audience. And if you don't have an audience, after a few weeks, maybe months, if you are lucky, they will stop because there is no real sense to share if you want to share from the beginning, if you don't have an audience. So in my views, of often in setting the goals and engaging with users, we ask users some stuff that doesn't really make sense for them or only for a few. And you need to start maybe by building the place, building the audience they need, and that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Building an audience is, is, is very difficult, actually, because you need to understand why they are listening and, and they are there. Yeah. Exactly, Manuel. Also with sub-communities, right? They have their own goals, and the sub-sub-communities that you also share, right? They even have their own goals and successes. So how do you deal with that, then? Um, I think dealing with sub-communities is much easier. Mm. Um, because most likely they have an immediate, immediate purpose, at least in, in our case. Um, and uh, in terms of how to build, to, uh, to bridge the gap, mm. um, talking with them. Mm. Uh, I mentioned before, we have a lot of very engaged volunteers. And recently we had the case, so we have a working group working on something very exciting. And uh, uh, in, you know, separating tasks, we ask, okay, so who would like to ca take care of the community of practice that we want to build, silence. So a group of people that are spending a lot of hours every week to do in-depth work on something they're passionate about, they do believe in connection very much, but they, they, they don't, don't want to spend their time in community managing. It's like, it was very clear, and then the point is, we need to connect with them, we need to ask why, what is not working, why it's working, and that's really the only way, I think. And in, in the sub-communities, sub when, when there is the core group you were talking about, it has worked very well. Mm -hmm. But you really need that core group. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, to, to say also that um, when we talked with with all these first members, let's call them that, that way in the beginning to design the community, a lot of them, and certainly the students, they told us, don't expect me, mm. even if I truly believe in the purpose of that community, education for climate, it speaks to me really, I'm active in that field daily in my job, so in, you, 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 you would think you kind of offer a gift, mm. and they tell, they, they, they tell you, we won't come in the morning at school and connect to the platform. Forget about this. <laughs> we, we don't. We don't go to Facebook. We barely go to Instagram and, mm -hmm. and don't expect us to open that platform. And you know, that's, that's really interesting. Even the most motivated one, the first one, and they say, we won't go to the platform. You need to have a very strong goal and really to capture their own needs, but still, even if you do, you need to trigger them. And that's funny, by the way, on uh, measurement, uh, as, as we discussed uh, mm -hmm. before, we see that a lot of members, because you can distinguish the new members and uh, active members, a lot of members, they enter the platform by clicking on a link on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, where the link is basically, in a nutshell, mostly the students, they told us, you need to be where we are. We won't move our 
from our own place, you need to be there. Mm. So, um, yeah, social media and connection via other platform to trigger, to click on the link and to cut is, 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 is huge, actually, mm. really huge. Exactly. And just to add, sorry, f for us, for example, that's quite a, a great challenge because we, we are a selected group of users, right? So uh, every time we publish something on Facebook or on LinkedIn, then we always have to have that disclaimer for whose community is open, for whose op campfire is open. It's not everyone on board because there is not content for everyone there and also because we don't have the resource to manage 80 million or even 10,000, to be honest. Or it's so. mm, Yeah. Well, Moaz, I have a question for you as well, right? Uh, you have all these different communities, right? They have goals, they have different use cases, different audiences, right? As a product owner, you need to think, okay, what direction am I heading? Where am I going? What would you think is then the process? Do you see a common denominator between all the platforms? And how do you go about deciding, okay, this is maybe that will help the goals of most clients together? Yeah, I think it's a it's a very uh, interesting question, especially for us as like an open source product where we see so many different use cases. Um, and um, I, I think for us, it's it that was also the core thing why we went down like that route of flexibility and mm. customizability within open social, because um, we wanted to make sure that um, that that open social allows for. Um, people to create their own space and in the end like we talked about this in the break that like um, a lot of communities have a are not primarily an online community but they are a community for volunteering for like they meet in real life so you you try to represent the uh, community on in a digital space mm. right so and that needs to shape to the needs of those communities mm. so making it as, as as flexible as possible is is really important but on the other hand we really try to identify needs and 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 patterns within these communities like for example um, engagement strong strong engagement pathways right like uh, we handle this hooked model where you always want to try to deliver a path forward and create a cycle of people like giving them a reward, giving them an incentive to re-engage. Um, uh, that's also why, I mean, in my talk, I've talked a lot about engagement automation, about um, data data points that you need to gather, and also about understanding that the community is bigger than, than your product, right? Mm -hmm. Like not having that um, arrogancy to say like, oh, we've set up this community and from now on, every interaction of the members will happen there. So understanding that there's a system outside, that there's an ecosystem outside is really important and taking that into account in your product development journey is really important to understand like sometimes a positive interaction with the community is a link and they click and they like and then drop off again because then they are back to Instagram. Mm. That, that can be a very positive interaction for you because they engaged with you, they created some value on the community and then they leave, that's fine. We're not Facebook, we don't live from our advertisement. Mm -hmm. We wanna have uh, like the people, with a po leave them with a positive, um, positive feeling, with something they accomplished, with something they can come back for the next time. That is, that is for us a positive engagement, not time on app. Mm. And has that flexibility now, you also are part of setting up that platform, right? That that flexibility actually like help you in setting up a user flow or a member journey or were there also issues that make it more complex than it actually had to be as we discussed, Frederick discussed, right? They made it quite a bit of a complex menu and it's something I try to always reiterate. I know it's very flexible, but it doesn't have to also like be that complicated just because it's flexible. So how do you see it? I will answer, but I have one question <laughs> first. Uh, um, if uh, going to the platform with a link, what you describe, it, it's, it's a positive interaction, why a website is not enough? Because you can have that with a, a WordPress website, right? I don't know if, sorry. <laughs> That, that is an excellent point. I mean, um, I think in some cases that might be actually true. Uh, there are some c communities that are networks or that are like a newspaper where they want, where people wanted to have a discussion functionality. And again, there obviously then we come to the user journey part. That is a successful interaction obviously for the start. 
but if that is everybody, the community will die from it, right? So you need at least a few people that do that three, four times and then say, oh, I actually want more. You know what? I answer to that comment. And then, then they come back and maybe post something. So while, yes, you're, you're right, it's maybe a bit oversimplified to say, oh, every time somebody clicks a link, it's successful. That is not true. It is true in some contexts and in others, you then want to grow them from there, obviously. Yes, that's true. But also, I think it's very important, again, then to understand, like, where are they coming from? How often do they drop? So you need to be able to trace their path to understand that is a user that now came back four or five times, back and forth, but didn't stay. Because understanding why they haven't stayed is equally important to un as to understand why they stayed. So you can really learn from that. <laughs> okay. So just, uh, just on, the, uh, on the simplicity of tools, right? Mm. Indeed. I mean, keep it the most simple you can. <laughs> but we need to keep in mind that um, it depends, of course, you cannot generalize because it depends from one community to another, but sometimes they are very simple features mm. that are not so, even the, if they seem simple, they are not so available for everyone for free. Like, mm. we discovered, for example, that for a lot of, uh, of our members, uh, being able to create an event with the end world button, which is super simple, it's just one button, right? And to manage uh, manage uh, invitees for for uh, an event and to maybe send invitation, mm. I mean, you need to have something. You can't do that with a um, Google invite, right? Or Google meeting. You need it's it's a mini website mm. for a lot of people. That little simple feature mm. that is standard in open social mm. has a lot of value actually mm. that's one thing and the other thing is that creating last la, last year we had a, a very successful uh, flow um, because twice a year we organize a big event right and we thought maybe we can ask people uh, from the community if they have nice case to share in that big event mm in order not for us not to search for different speakers. I mean, coming from like a top-down approach, like let's ask people, let's do a call for participation. My God, we received like 30 super complete um, presentation of schools, teachers saying in my schools we did this, that our project, that is my little startup with my students. Mm -hmm. 30, in, just because the, the trigger was you will be able to present, so we will we will vote and we will uh, select the three best, uh, blah blah blah, based on this criteria, and you will present your project in front of I don't remember 500 people mm. online. So the amplification part of the uh, community, which is super simple, was really a trigger for them to participate to engage. By the way, we we do the same exercise. We just announced that yesterday, I think, if I could recall, <laughs> on the platform on a project around green come for schools. So if you know people uh, working on green comes <laughs> for schools... Sure, uh, advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much for that. Also regarding short-term goals, right? You call it long-term goals. That's how you reflect the user journey as well. When you have a short-term goal, let's say, right, you have a project coming up or you're having looking something to do for one year that is big. Do you adapt then the platform, the member journey? Because now the goal is different, right? So you want users to go a different path within the platform. Do you do that? And uh, how do you do those changes? And are they like very obvious to users or do they have difficulties with the new journey? We have done it and uh, in general it has helped. Mm. So um, th they are quite obvious. We also tell them. Mm. We send an email <laughs> and we you know, with a little screenshot or a link to a video <laughs> in which there is someone that, that speaks and like, you have to click here now. Mm. And, and so that makes it quite obvious. Mm. Um, and going back to the complexity and versus the simplicity and the flexibility and all of that, uh, keep it simple, certainly. It is very difficult, I think, and it's... Um, kind of uh, the other side of the medal of open social, right? It's always evolving, always updating. Th that's quite amazing, but then it's a very steep learning curve for us in the first place. And then also for our 97, I can't remember how many, content creators, content managers, and all of that. So it's a community in itself. And then for our users. And the fact that it's, like, it's really the ability to unlearn can you say, okay, you couldn't do this 
one month ago, but you could you can do this now. And then changing the word of mouth that is so powerful, of course. Um, I, I having the, the changing mindset w within the organization and within the community managers in which, okay, this is too complex, let's decomplify, decomplexify. It's, it's not easy, like explaining what is evident to you, what is evident to me, because I'm so in the project, is not for the newcomers. Mm. Thank Sorry, you, you can Danny. continue <laughs> to there as well. Uh, Yes, did you have something? Yeah, yeah, just maybe to, to, to remind that we know that the last year um, uh, newsletters are, are really booming and are very successful. So the simplicity, but also the universality of email notification mm. is still super key. Uh, so we, we, for example, we, we send a newsletter, so we build a newsletter uh, via the platform every month uh, with more and more content from community members. So mm. we push actually via email for some reason in our case, because we need to be very secure and the like, so the notification via email is very difficult to read, uh, but that's not related to you guys, that's that's <laughs> on our system, that's the way it is. So we have a lot of people complaining about the fact that the notification is difficult to read and not sexy enough, mm -hmm. prove that a lot of people are receiving this email and they value the fact that they receive via email a push to see what others were doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's simple, you receive it, and then you, you click on the link and that's it. And that's, that's maybe the problem we can self solve, not you. <laughs> right at you, Moritz. <laughs> um, yeah, you just also talked about, um, oh my God, I lost my train of thought, the metrics as well, right? And how are you then like helping track the user journeys? Of course, Open Social is focusing a bit more on analytics because it's something definitely there's still improvements on. So how are you currently keeping track of that? And also to, you're showing obviously maybe to investors or organizations or head as well, right? Like how do you showcase that, okay, the platform is going successful, right? Because those require sometimes, unfortunately, always metrics. You can't just throw out it's successful or not successful. And it's hard hard to put that in numbers. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge question. <laughs> that, and that's, that's a question we, we, are, we are working on uh, these days. So from the beginning, we have, as I said, uh, <clears throat> we have a huge dashboard mm -hmm. with metrics, indeed. The one you use, plus the one we use, plus com we combining, indeed, uh, the dashboard from Open Social with the metrics we have on the other side and the like. Mm -hmm. So we try to combine and to make sense of all this and yeah, also to, to, to see if is the traffic coming from Twitter or is the traffic coming from, you know, we, we track everything we can and then we summarize it for our um, internal stakeholders to see, look, but that's only the vitality basically of the platform, it's not really the results and the way that people see results can be very diverse. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how can you prove the value what you produced? Uh, is it one-time achievement? Is it something ongoing? Is it the growth that you want to, to show or that you need to show? Uh, is it the number of people you connected with? Is it the number of profile? It depends from who you are talking with, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, we are working on this. You can, you can sometimes also say, like, look at the percentage of uh, profile mm -hmm. with um, intro and, and, and tags is increasing, for example. So the quality is, is, is increasing more than the number of people. Maybe it's more important. Um, how many people come and, and come again? Um, there are so many stuff, but for everyone we are talking with, it's sometimes quite different. For me, personally, I think we, but that's very personal. I think, I think we sometimes, um, avoid or not there to talk about money mm -hmm. and return on investment and i think that on the long term on on on, on if you look at it as an evolution that's a worth investment in the way that you can indeed engage people connect with people and 
the cost is not so much more than organizing a, a big event for a lot of uh, a lot of uh, organization and so on. You have, if you organize one big event with all the guides and the scouts uh, of uh, three countries, uh, two days, the cost is enormous, yeah. right? But you engage these people only once. Of yeah. course, you need that also when you have a community, but you need to, to dare to compare a bit the investment on that event and the investment on the community. That's, yeah, I can, yeah. <laughs> Of course, they're both investment on the community, as you mentioned before. Uh, that's uh, right. Um, uh, we, are, we use uh, Google Analytics a lot, uh, and uh, uh, that's very, very helpful uh, in terms of uh, showing the diversity of, of people getting to the platform. Uh, uh, that, of course, is, is, is very important to, to show that uh, people are coming from all the five regions and uh, from uh, member organizations who have a lot of members, so the bigger one, as well as the one that have very few members. So kind of, of, of showing the accessibility and how relevant it is for many different kind of users in that sense, related to the membership. It's, uh, we, um, it helped a lot saying you know, that the difference in accessibility to events, what I was mentioning before, 50% uh, of participants coming from Africa region, unthinkable, literally unthinkable without uh, the platform. It's just been possible. So that's clearly show for the impact. And then there is a the narrative in terms of, of course, what, you know, return of investment means very different things for they're very different people. Um, and then the money is important, depends on your total budget, right? It's different if it is, you know, one twentieth like, of your budget or a drop in the ocean of your budget that changes a great deal. Um, and then storytelling helps a lot. Having those subculture and subcommunities uh, really helps because then we can send out a survey on the event and on the learning, of course, but then there is always that little part about campfire. Uh, and and for, is, for us, it's great. Like we had feedback saying, it's so much better now than one year ago, and now I think, like I've seen the value of that. And, uh, and, and that's for us in terms of showing the impact, even if it's, an edit, it's, it's, one, it's one quote, right? Uh, and having more and more of that quote from more diverse background and so on and so forth helps a lot. And it is crucial, at least for us, to show that return on investment. Mm. And ideally, to like we will need even more granular right. um, analytics about you know our the representative of our member representatives are the kind of the most important on the platform. And if someone asks us, are they connecting multiple times? The real answer is. I don't know, because the amount of work that we will need to do, it's too much to answer. Mm -hmm. Moritz, how do you take that into, like, that feedback into consideration? Yeah, I think, so it's, it's a little bit, um, like, I have two points for this to answer. So the, the first one is obviously from a, like, KPI perspective. Um, you can look into, uh, like, I like the like model, for example, that Pando handles here. Um, they look at the the the, um, the reach. So basically, how much people do you reach? How much um, uh, how much adoption is there on the platform? Right? How many percentage of the people actually use features that you see as relevant of using? And then um, how sticky is that? So how often do they come back? Not how, per se how many, but how often? Mm -hmm. So does your community grow? Do they use the features and do they use it often enough? Because if any of those factors grow, you, you do something right. So from a community health perspective, I think you can really look at those. Um, and then uh, from there, you can build up again. again. And then there is the second point to this answer, I think, is um, the corporate political point, right? Because that is like, yeah, you can look at this, but if you show that towards management or towards people that are not so engaged with community work, that will mean little to them. Like, oh yeah, we have 600 instead of 580 people. Cool. So um, that, that's then the question of return of investment. And um, 
So there's there's a great article from uh, Millington, from the co-founder of Feverbee, about the return of investment, and he introduces like a like newer model because he he starts the article with that he hates the word of return of investment because it's antiquated and it comes from a time where you have a physical product and a manual labor to hold against that, mm -hmm. and the community is much too complex. Like generally, modern work environment is m much more complex than that. So. Um, he talks a lot about impact, and I love that you're doing that. And then we come back towards what we've discussed at the beginning of the talk, the vision, and what do you want to achieve, right? So not measuring one-on-one, -on -one, oh, we put 10,000 euros in it and got six signups or like 15 likes or 600 users, but like define what is a, a value for your organization, what do you expect to be from that community, and then see how much impact that does. And he specifically talks about like using NPS scores for that. If you really want to quantify it, like in a transformed NPS score. So how likely for the, for event uh, assignees then, for example, you could ask um, how, much, uh, how, how much influence had this community of me joining uh, this event from one to 10. And then you have a score on the impact because you defined what is good for the community, what do you, we want to achieve, you can put a score to that, and then you multiply it by the reach of the community. That means the higher the score, the higher the reach, and the higher the combination aspect of it, the bigger the, the, the impact score of the community. So I really like that model, and it's like a really good article I can recommend to everyone. And it, I think it's, it, it, it combines all the aspects we're talking about, like taking not like just pure, pure uh, number values, but defining your vision, defining where you want to be, um, and and calculating basically from there how much influence had your community of your overall goal as an organization. Mm -hmm. By the way, a, a little idea for um, the community talks, right? Uh, it's often we don't have benchmarks ourselves, right? So I know what is my bonds rate. I know that I should, we should decrease it, but I wonder what's your bonus rate. You know, I, I would, I, I, it would be nice to, to, to be able to, comp I mean, yeah. even if everything is different, my bonus rate is a concern because it's, 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 it's too high. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's okay, it's, it's well okay, but for a community, the bonus rate should be very low. Um, um, the returning visitor is also different from one community mm -hmm. to another. You, you don't stay guide for your whole, whole life. So mm -hmm. that's normal that you do. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> not the majority, I guess, from the community. Okay, you do. But I mean, yeah. the, the, the returning visitor, I don't know, for my community, is it 30%, 40%? Is it good, not good? It's difficult. What is the, the, the returning visitor of an event? The returning visitor of an event often is maybe a few percentage, right? A few percent. So when you have 30% of returning visitor, maybe it's huge, maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. I wanted to add also on the, on the return on investment indeed. Of course, it's super the long run. But for us, for example, in the commission, it's <clears throat> the, the idea around all this is really about, it's really about policy and really about um, having um, the citizen participating to policy making, having influence and contact with that. It will take years. It's a new way to connect the institution with the citizen. And it's not only uh, the community education for climate, it's also the other community. It's a totally new way to connect. It's not, it's not anymore a website where people click and, con and click and, and like. It's more than this. So I think we need to think about return on investment still, but on the long run, because it's, it will be a new way to connect. And it's not only new for the citizens who say, because a lot of our members, they say, wait, are you, do you mean that some people from the institution, they will look at what we do? Of course they do, right? Ah, we would like more. Great. And when we talk about the people inside, they say, oh, you have citizens talking to us. Great, right? Mm -hmm. It's also the reason why we have a community hidden in the community only with people from the commission, actually. Mm -hmm. um, because we also have to um, increase awareness and participation for them because that's where people and, and policymakers are connecting mm -hmm. and that's where the value, the, the real value on long term is actually. So that, that's, 
that won't be in a few weeks or yeah. a month. Exactly. Uh, one also big hot topic question I'd like to address still is, of course, AI. It was mentioned quite a bit. It is a very hot topic today and in generally everywhere in the world, right? Do you also think then AI, we talk about ChatGPT, of course, as well, and all the things with it. Do you think it's the future of community building or do you more think that it will actually remove the part of the community or actually support you in community goal, uh, reaching your community goals and management? Was that a long one? Should I shorten it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Generally, do you think AI will help you in community building or make it more difficult? It depends on how you use it. That's a good one. Uh, how, yes. do you, how, how do you think is the positive and negatives? At the moment, uh, if you want to have a good community management, what you described before, uh, so people, multiple competences, they really know their members, the needs of the members, I see it very hard. I'm happy to, you know, or maybe I'm not happy to be uh, <laughs> um, proven wrong, but I, I, as in there is an element of personal connection in uh, in community management that personal is a person. Um, I do think it can help the human managing better or differently the community. I think there are, the question is, <clears throat> sorry, the answer is definitely yes, 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 and <laughs> yes, and it's already the case today. So on community management, for example, because I, I talked about the importance to, to speed, to, to, to be very, very reactive, proactive, mm -hmm. uh, actually to be very e efficient in the way that you publish some stuff that you support. Basically, for me, I do the visuals on the platform, for example, on the go. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Sorry. Um, and the fact that um, um, on the Photoshop this week, mm. you have uh, AI and you can fill in uh, the space that are empty with uh, AI to publish and to go faster and to, to deliver visuals and uh, banners and whatever mm. uh, in, in a few minutes and not anymore in a few hours, it's a huge game changer for me yeah. personally. And that's all we did today. I guess our colleagues working on the translation, real-time translation, or not real-time, but you get my point, the, the, the <laughs> fact that you can click and have everything translated, yeah. the threat of, 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 of comments translated, it's a huge issue. I guess with AI, it would change uh, a lot. And last but not, and we, we have within the commission, there are a lot of projects on, on, on AI, so it's, it's too soon to, to, to yeah. connect all these with, with that. But uh, also, let's let's keep in mind that it has a huge impact also on every citizens and member of our community in the way, for example, that they are to share something in English, in the way that they are to uh, synthesize um, a blog post and the like. Um, hmm. So, I, I, in my view, it might have a nice impact on participation, having people daring faster, easier to hmm. post something helped with um, AI. And oh, I have another example. Um, Miro, you know, they are here mm. in, based in Amsterdam, right? Mm. Uh, the new AI features for Miro uh, are really awesome. So you have participated, we do a lot of workshop with, with, with people. They put post-its, you click, to click. Okay, it's a beta, but it's already really amazing. You click, one click, and you have a summary of the post-its. So for the facilitation point of view of the community manager, using AI as we already do, because I have the beta version, I'm super happy, um, um, it helps. So it already has a lot of impact and it will continue like this. Yeah. And I'm sure that you have thousands of other examples. Yeah. Do you see it then also a negative part, like re yeah. removing that community side of things? Yeah, I, I, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm not per se somebody who thinks like, oh yeah, technology is like a threat to, to, to the human touch of it. <laughs> Um, but I, I do think, for example, um, especially on the moderation side, obviously, like um, there's a lot of things that AI can do well, but there's also a lot of things where it doesn't. And um, I mean, there's no control aspect to it, certainly. And we've seen like there are very sensitive topics, right? Um, we have communities that deal with uh, like uh, victim support, uh, uh, like uh, suicide prevention and things like that. So um, being mindful or with, with minors, um, being, being mindful of 
the impact you have on people's life with it is very, very important. Um, the GDPR concerns, obviously, mm. privacy concerns are very important to keep in mind and not do it just because it makes your life a little bit easier, but mm. actually have, um, like, it's, it's going to have quite an impact on, on people if there are mismanagement in, like, uh, moderation or things like that. I, I in, in terms of the negative, but I think it's, goes back to people and not to the technology, right? As in, uh, I, I agree with everything you described. It can be a great help for the person working, uh, for speed, for uh, questioning. You know, there are other ways to do these, and, and then you as a person, you go and do. Uh, I do think that organizations might run the risk to think that because AI it, it can get very advanced, they can get maybe less competent people, while I will say that somehow you need the opposite. As in, you need someone that can very quickly scrutinize what, what's the work, you know, the post-it uh, summary, and uh, Notion has great AI, it's like uh, the summarized content using the same language that we use, it's, it's quite incredible, it's very powerful, but then uh, when I read the level of competencies that I need to have to say, okay, this is the, the voice of WAGS, this is what I mean for leadership, and it's not just what WAGS, we have our own definition, and it's not just a bunch of things put together that sounds nice. So, but again, the risk is on the people managing it. And also on the yes. negative points, because you want negative points, right? <laughs> so that will be the closing statement, if you, if so you it's yours. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> if you use if you ChatGPT and, uh, and all these big names, indeed, mm. so the, neg the very negative point is, is the cost of the, all these servers, and mm. we need to keep that in mind. Yeah. <clears throat> That's that's a very <laughs> negative Keeping point, the cost. <laughs> and, and also the fact that you because basically the algorithm and the like. I'm not the, tech, the, the techie, here, but the, the algorithm mm. they are open source, right? They, yeah. they they are known for years. Mm. The data they use to train this algorithm that's another issue. So the bias of these big ones for me that's another big risk for building communities and the like because there are a lot of bias let's say not by design and it's it's not open source but i believe in soon i hope before the end of the year being able to download that um, uh, algorithm specialized so specialized ai to download it on my computer and to ask him to run and to ask my questions and to train him based on my own library mm. and that makes more sense because it it's not using big servers, so for the planet, make a big, huge, huge difference. And secondly, I'm in control of my data sets that I have. And if we build communities with a good data set made by the community itself and that we can run on one little server or one computer and enhance, for example, the search, which is, by the way, the search, a huge feature that a lot of people, and certainly the active one, want to have perfect, mm. then it might be very a negative point that converged to uh, something more positive Positive. because Definitely. we had to end on something more positive. <laughs> you didn't have to, but thank you so much. I really appreciate the closing statement. Thank you so much to the panel. <laughs> Indeed.